Yeah. Uh, yeah, should we, Mary Minerva State Park, if you can point to that, John, in that area, on the maps was clearly not marked, so the public is unaware that these parcels are intermingled with the park parcels, yeah. making them premium development land because you could actually uh, have a housing development live right in amongst a state park. Yeah, it's very, this, this map, that brings a very good point because this map was printed by WPT, by Blixet. It's not a Forest Service production and therefore the only ownership that shows on this is adjacent National Forest Lands, Clearwater National Forest, State, which is the dark blue, and uh, Fish and Wildlife, National Parks, not not uh, not federal, I mean not state park, uh, BOR, Bureau of Reclamation, and other federal agencies, and all the rest of it uh, is. But they're not. Is, is not there's shown. no state parks clearly marked, no. and down here, if you can point to that, John. The Dorshack Dam State Park borders that particular parcel, making that parcel extremely valuable. And it's make, right next, you just go in by um, Freeman Creek. For development. Yes. Yeah. yeah for very development. High, high value development. And, and Mr. Otter, uh, our, our governor, uh, wanted to close this state park. and uh, was He was it? successful at closing that park. and. And Gary Schroeder was um, credited with being instrumental in reopening that park. Along with the county commissioners. And the county Clearwater, commissioners from Clearwater, Clearwater County. County got that reopened. But that would have, and they also talk about selling uh, the state lands, you know, to make up for the deficit that the state had. But should that have been closed and sold, uh, that becomes an extremely valuable. Yes. piece of property yeah. and uh, uh, curiously enough right next to that is, is Potlatch Corporation. It's Potlatch Corporation and it's Army Corps of Engineers actually owns this land throughout here including I understand that they actually own the park land okay. but it makes this it, that part that particular parcel extremely valuable as is the parkland up there which is totally unidentifiable for the public to know and and I, I would have to say that uh, that as Teresa was showing these people around Teresa knows little if anything about environment over McCroskey State Park or any of the particulars about how these lands have been managed by the Forest Service we're strictly going there and you'll find that most of these lands, including up here, uh, butt up against Potlatch Corporation in one way or another. And what we found, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, I want to stay with the timeline for a minute. Anyway, these, land, these lands were picked out in September of uh, 2007 and public totally ignorant of anything that was going on. Nothing. Didn't know anything. So should they, to start with, the Forest Service should have approached the public immediately and said, this is what we're looking at possibly doing. Yes. How do you feel about it? But the public was made told, they were totally left out of it, even though this is land owned by the public. And, and the Forest Service on their website, uh, has what they call a quarterly report of what their uh, projects are. And they call it the SOPA. I don't know what that SOPA stands for, but I'm sure one of my colleagues could tell me because uh, I never messed with the SOPA. But this should have appeared on the SOPA and it did not appear until the public had been already aware of it. That's a very interesting fact. But now, nothing was done illegally. Nothing's been done illegally by the Forest Service because this is the way they've operated in the past on these land exchanges as far as the public is concerned. Consider, this is the only irretrievable, irreversible action 
that the Forest Service takes. Uh, you know, land management, nature can heal. Uh, I mean, you still own the land. When you no longer yeah. own the land, no say it. And, and, and to have something that is, is as secretive as land exchanges as far as the public is concerned, not illegal, but certainly not informative. So, so here, this was 2007 when these lands were, were picked out with no knowledge by the people that picked it out. And I think Lisa's letter reflects that. The district was coerced. Excuse me. Cross that out. The, 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 district, the district personnel um, uh, were very concerned about the way these lands were picked out, how they were coerced into identifying parcels of land uh, for a trade. When the people that were doing the coercive action knew nothing about these lands and didn't want to know anything about them. That's the part Well, that these lands look about. like they were hand chosen because the locations are so incredibly accessible. Well, They're of course, very, very accessible for the public everywhere. They were chosen to be developed or they were chosen because they were adjacent to potlatch corporation lands. Yeah, when you look, there's... when you take out the actual Forest Service maps and look at the maps, you can clearly identify the boundary properties around them. Yes. Unlike the maps that were provided to the public, which are extremely poor, this one's far better than the maps that the public, the general public, has seen. Oh yes. Yes, and, and this was done for an express purpose, to, to hide that. Tom, 